pain but you do not feel like taking pharmaceuticals anymore, I got you covered. Today I'm going to show you over 10 medicinal herbs that are highly effective for treating pain so that you can ditch the chemicals for good. So let's dig into the weeds. Okay, my first and one of my favorite herbs for pain is actually poppy seed. So yes, it's actually the red poppy and you can buy the seeds in like bigger grocery uh, stores. And um, they have this nice dark black color. Yeah, I can show you this here. I'm going to pour some in. Can you see this? Yeah. So those are the poppy seeds. And uh, yeah, but it's important that they are actually have this nice dark color. You can see they have a bit like a whitish uh, thing on top. That's normal. It's totally fine. But they should not look like overall whitish or washed out because there's a type of poppy seed um, that's on sale in supermarkets um, that is a steamed poppy seed that is actually it has kind of the good stuff the stuff that we want uh, washed out so we want the dark poppy seeds and as I said they're easy to get you have to take the right dose so all those remedies actually that I'm going to tell you about uh, today I have several of them um, they work pretty quickly. They work just as quickly as a normal conventional pharmaceutical for pain. They work within 20 minutes to half an hour. And if they don't work, you just take a little more. <laughs> yeah. So with poppy seed, a good dose to start with, let's say like a teaspoonful like this is about 10 grams maybe. Yeah. So you can take about 30 grams, I would say for an adult. I mean, you can start with a bit less. You could start with 20 grams and see if it works and then take... A bit more after half an hour you can find your dose yeah with all those remedies we ideally we find out the dose that works yeah that is the criterion okay they are all highly effective in the right dose if you take too little of course yeah then they don't do the job okay so maybe start with a teaspoon you can easily actually you know if I'm if I have a headache I don't want to bother with like making a decoction like boiling the tea for half an hour or you don't have that time you want to get uh, rid of the pain fast so what I usually do I just pop um, uh, two yeah three tablespoons of poppy seed into my mouth and wash it down with water yeah it's actually pretty easy I mean you could make a tea you could boil it brew it with hot water let it sit for maybe 10-15 minutes and then drink it I would also eat the seeds just to really get everything uh, in uh, but you don't have to make a tea you don't have to make any complicated preparation that just uh, takes time you can just take the poppy seeds they actually taste pretty good and you don't have to chew them you can chew them um, but yeah you just wash them down with water and that's it yeah in 20 in about 20 minutes you have the effect so the point is they also make you a bit tired so this is a good uh, combination if you have a headache or other pain and you want to sleep if it's night or uh, so it's no problem that that you get a bit tired of that yeah so I would take this in the evening and not during the day when you still have things to do or you have to drive a car or anything then please do not take the poppy seed it can make you a bit tired um, so this is a good thing to take at night. Um, so there are other forms there of in the same family of the red poppy. There's also the Californian poppy, with, which is this nice, beautiful orange flower. Um, you can find this maybe as a yeah as a herb for for making tea, or maybe you find a tincture of the Californian poppy. You can try that with tinctures. It's yeah, you have to find out your dose, um, the dose that works. But, you know, you just start with a couple of drop dropperfuls and then you wait for a while and you take a bit more. So you gradually find out your dose. This is important with all of those remedies, okay? So uh, those two things, red poppy, Californian poppy, which is the orange poppy. Then we have also a Chinese um, root, which is called Corridalis root, or in Chinese it's Yang Hu Suo. And I have here an extract powder. You can also find the raw herb, like the, the root slices that you would boil in water for half an hour. The dose here is also approximately around 30 grams that it works for most people. You can start with a bit less to find out. Um, so this you would buy the root pieces and boil them, make a decoction, like boil them for at least half an hour. Better is one hour. But as I said, if you don't have the time and you want it to work faster, there are also those extract powders. Um, and those three things are... 
uh, yeah, they are opioids. So please don't <laughs> don't uh, freak out. I said opioids, yes. But um, you know the difference between a herb like a whole herb like poppy seed and all those things I just talked about, and the pharmaceuticals that we call um, opioids is as big as the difference between a beetroot and sugar. Yeah. So we are talking about a highly refined, chemically altered pharmaceuticals on one hand that create dependency can create dependency and other side effects and we're talking about here about natural herbs how they occur in nature and this is a totally different form a totally different form to work in the body um, so it's way more natural as I said it's like the difference between uh, a beetroot and uh, white sugar and this difference is pretty big okay so um, that shouldn't uh, turn you away uh, from trying those remedies okay so, but all those remedies in this opioid category, the poppy seed, Californian poppy and the Corridalis root, they make you a bit tired. Yeah, they can make you tired. They work as sleep remedies also. Yeah, so I mean, that's practical. If you have a headache at night or back pain or whatever, and you just want to sleep, it is of course very practical. Yeah, but I have some alternatives. If you do not want to get tired, then you can use, for example, uh, willow bark. Yeah, I just, I have a cap, the capsule form only here. I cannot show you the willow bark at the moment, but it might work in capsules. Sometimes they sell just the, the herb um, powdered in capsules, which of course, maybe then the dose is pretty high because there's maybe only half a gram in a capsule. And you would also need maybe up to about around 30 grams as an effective dose. So that's 60 capsules. Okay, that's maybe not so practical. Uh, what you can do if you have willow trees growing around you, they grow, they like to grow near the water and they are different, uh, different types of willow, but they all have salicylates uh, in the bark. So now we're talking about this other category, which are the salicylates, uh, the herbs that contain salicylates. Um, and you hear maybe from the, from the word, this is the substance that aspirin or um, uh, what's the name? Aspirin or salicylic acid, exactly. <laughs> salicylic acid is derived from, yeah? So those herbs actually gave the inspiration to this pharmaceutical that is a very famous pain remedy that you have probably heard of or already taken, the aspirin, yeah? So um, the bark of the willow tree has the salicylates and I do not want you to strip off the bark of any willow tree. Yeah, this will harm the tree, but you can use the twigs. Maybe you f even find the twigs that have fallen to the ground uh, or you can break off a couple of twigs. That's also not going to be so uh, damaging to the tree and you can kind of uh, chip off the bark of those twig pieces with a knife and then you make a decoction out of those uh, out of those branches, out of those um, pieces of the of the bark. So decoction means you boil it in water about half an hour to an hour and then strain the tea and drink it. Yeah, this is a way to take uh, willow bark. There's also another herb in this category, uh, which is called or another more common herb that maybe grows around you. It's called meadowsweet. And this one also has the salicylates. Actually, this herb meadowsweet in its name, in its old name from before. So today it's called Filipendula ulmaria. But before that, it was called spirea, and this lent uh, the, the idea of the word aspirin, which is this um, salicylic acid containing pharmaceutical. Yeah. Ah, and the, uh, the salicylate, the word salicylate also comes from the name for the willow tree, which is salix alba. So those two plants inspired the creation of our pharmaceutical salicylates. But you can take the natural form, which is just as effective, but without the side effects. So those two things, they're not going to cause any tummy problems or any problems with blood thinning or, or things like that. So they are a lot, a lot safer than the pharmaceutical. Yeah. So you can try this out. This would be willow bark and or meadowsweet. Meadowsweet, this is just an herb that grows wild. You can just use, we say, the above ground portion. This is, yeah, the, the stem, the leaves, the flower, uh, everything except the, the root contains the salicylates. Yeah. And in the case of the willow tree, it's the bark, but please use the twigs because it's enough and it's not going to damage the tree. Yeah. So this is our salicylates and they do not make you sleepy. That's the good thing. Um, also, if you have any pain, so what I'm talking about today, 
works for pretty much any pain you know it could be back pain period pain arthritis headache migraines anything practically um I have a whole playlist about specifically migraines because there are a couple of other tricks you can use. There's a highly effective remedy, uh, ginger, that you have to use in a specific way and it's very effective on the onset of a migraine to just stop the migraine before it develops and also there are some other videos that I'm going to link up here about migraines if you're interested in that. Um, so those are the remedies here today. They work basically for any kind of pain, even chronic conditions. You know, if you have to manage a chronic pain like arthritis pain or fibromyalgia pain or anything like that, you of course, you find out your dose. You just always take the minimum dose that you need to suppress the pain, yeah? So um, you have to just try it out. The dose is a bit different for, for everybody, yeah? I'm just giving you kind of my estimates that usually work for people, but always start with a bit a lower dose and then work your way up. You can always take a second dose. If it doesn't work, you can take a little more and just find out your dose that way, okay? So if you have, let's say you have a headache or, um, or other pain in the morning during the day, you don't want to get sleepy, you do not want to try the poppy seed for that reason, you can also take our methyl xanthines. So this is a fancy word. This is just the chemical compound that is um, uh, part of uh, coffee, of coffee, of green tea, of black tea, of guarana and of cola nut. So there are several several more plants actually on almost all continents. Uh, we have those caffeine containing plants that contain those methyl xanthines. And those are highly effective for pain, especially for a headache. They, they work pretty immediately and it's really fantastic, but they do not work if you drink cafe, coffee anyway every day. So then you are kind of used to the effect and it doesn't provoke this effect anymore. Yeah, But if you normally do not drink coffee or any other of those stimulating herbs, then you can try that. Yeah, I, I do this. I kind of reserve the coffee for the cases when I really need it or when I have a headache and it's really highly effective. Or I just take matcha powder. So this is the powdered green tea from Japan and Korea. Um, this is also very quick. I mean, you do not, maybe you don't have coffee at home if you don't drink it regu on a regular basis. So what you can have at home is a little matcha tea. And I usually just take a tiny teaspoon. I mean, start with a bit less. This is already a good dose, but yeah, I would say about a teaspoon is like for an adult a good dose. Um, I put it in a little hot water. I whiz it up with one of those um, milk former uh, things. I mean, this is totally out of style. What would the Japanese say about me uh, saying this? Because they have those really beautiful, stylish bamboo whisks to whisk up the matcha and it's uh, it's a ritual. Did I say mate actually or did I say matcha? No, I hope I said matcha tea. I mean, mate is also an herb that contains the, those methyl xanthines and it grows in South America. And it would also be an option, of course. I yeah, I, I have it actually here, but I didn't bring it to the table. Okay, uh, so this is mate, but what I'm talking about now is the matcha. This is just powdered green tea that you can dissolve directly in water. It's really, it's such a quick way to make it strong green tea. And it definitely is going to do something for, especially for headaches, I would say, in this case. Uh, and it, it works really quick, yeah? Given that you do not drink matcha or coffee or something like that every day, okay? Uh, so reserve that for the occasions. Yeah, I also, I always have at home here some powdered cola nut or some powdered guarana. So this is actually not pronounced guarana. So it's guarana, believe me, I lived 10 years in Brazil. So where this grows, uh, the guarana. So those are also powders. You can just stir them into water and drink them or you can make like a nice little energy balls out of them that you have ready in the fridge to take or something like that. There's yeah many ways to take it. Yeah, so this is this category. And of course, the good old coffee would also work given that you do not drink everyday coffee anyway. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to some other herbs and remedies. Um, Actually, exactly, uh, remedies is the point, uh, because those are actually not herbs, but what also works really well, for, a, especially for a headache or any kind of tension, um, tension headache or any pain caused by tension, this could also be like neck pain is very typical, uh, is actually magnesium, yeah? So a good stiff dose of magnesium, um, I would say with magnesium, it's always good to have taken this before to know your bowel tolerance limit yeah because magnesium does cause loose stools in a certain dose in in everybody so this is just a normal um, kind of 
little side effect of taking magnesium so you have to know your dose so that you don't get two loose stools the next day but usually um, like the highest dose most people can take or uh, is around 1200 milligrams yeah so you're not getting there with just like 300 milligrams only very sensitive people uh, get uh, loose stools but just try it out i mean to really do something for a headache and to relax the muscles noticeably you probably need a dose of 800 milligram to 1200 milligrams so it has to be a good solid dose yeah so you can try this out but you can take this when you feel the headache when you have the tension headache or the pain and you take it and it should work within 20 minutes it does not make you sleepy it just relaxes you a bit i mean it is good for that reason it is good to take it before bedtime also if you take it regularly i have also a video about magnesium about which form to take and all the details about magnesium so that you can check that one out um, and also if you have that at home maybe vitamin d yeah vitamin d is also effective for pain um, and for other acute situations where you can take a high dose let's say you could take like 25,000 inter uh, international units um, so as a daily dose you would of course not take that much yeah so I'm talking here about an acute situation that you are having a headache in that moment and you are taking one time 25,000 units okay just to help you a bit with the headache I'm not talking about this as a daily dose yeah I also have a video about vitamin D if you want to know more I put it up here uh, you can check that out uh, so those are two non-herbal remedies but still natural um, vitamin D and magnesium okay then let's get to another herb or weed yeah actually uh, well it's actually weed <laughs> so this is the now very trendy yeah some people call it cbd oil i'm not so happy as an herbalist i'm not so happy about this you know uh, for me this is just cannabis oil yeah uh, or hemp this is the actual name of the plant uh, i mean there are many misconceptions around this plant in our culture and um so you know first we wanted only the thc out of this plant and getting high then you know, suddenly we want only the cbd out of this wonderful plant for those um, amazing other benefits i mean we should just take the whole herb this is usually the best way to go with plants we should not isolate any constituents out of them normally there are exceptions but they work usually very well just as the plant as it grows in nature without any modifications being done to it yeah which is of course yeah sometimes difficult but um it is available so you could uh, yeah check i mean those extracts you know some some are a full spectrum extract which means it's just the flower of the plant infused into oil this would be the ideal form or of course you can smoke it you can take it any any other way it will work uh, anyway but um yeah you don't uh, in this case i cannot tell you you know do you want more the cbd or the thc probably you want it just in the right balance that the natural wild growing herb has yeah in my opinion and um what it does i mean i don't know about all those claimed supposed uh, miracle benefits uh, of cannabis but what it treats effectively is sleep pain and anxiety yeah so this is uh, kind of for sure the treatments this is uh, a bit in the same direction as those um, uh, poppy seed and the opioids i talked about um, so this also can make you a bit sleepy but it can treat the pain effectively yeah just put you to sleep and you don't feel the headache anymore so yeah it helps with pain definitely so be careful um, i would recommend a very low dose and um, just try and two drops and seeing what it does you can always take more yeah so this would be another another option then we have some other herbs uh, we have for example valerian which i always have in tincture form then it's very quick to take in case you have a headache or you have a sleepless night or you wake up and so this is another one of those herbs it's not it's not an opiate it's not it's not in this uh, category an opiate but it is um yeah just an herb that's also good for pain relaxing the body and for sleep yeah and for anxiety actually also because well it relaxes you yeah so this is also something you could take more like at night 
but it is possible i know many people who take valerian also during the day you just find the perfect dose that doesn't make you too sleepy but still takes care of your pain or your anxiety or whatever you are going to treat with it so you can try it out during the day and you have to find your dose you know those tinctures they're all like different strengths and um, there's also valerian in pill form of course you could make a tea from the root we're talking about the valerian root in this case so there are different preparations it's hard to tell you a dose it works differently you have to try it out but it relaxes really the whole body so also i think it's especially good for tension headache or neck pain or back pain or something that has uh, some muscular tension involved so you can try it out for those cases yeah I usually I just start with like a teaspoon of tincture or a dropper full of of tincture and then I work my way up I take a bit more after 15 minutes and I take a bit more and so the effect kind of comes on slowly and you find out your dose okay so yeah then I, oh, I have another wonderful herb um, that I just uh, bought as a as a raw herb to make tea out of and it's called Jamaican dog wood. Yeah, it's actually also a bark, and you can find this also in tincture form. I just I bought the herb to make tea. I'm going to show you here how it looks. Yeah, so this is the Jamaican dog wood bark. It's called Pisidia. I'm going to write the names of the herbs in the description you can also i have some time stamps you can re-watch some parts of this video to to see what was the dosage and and to revisit this again if you need the information yeah so uh, this is the raw herb um that you would just make a decoction out of yeah so this you have to simmer for a while maybe half an hour to one hour you have to simmer it and then just drink the tea yeah so this you also have to see the dose yeah maybe start with 10 grams just see what it does yeah for you so it's always about finding out the dose and kind of slowly uh, increasing yeah yeah in tincture form we have some other good stuff available you know there is uh, wild lettuce for example or cramp bark herbs like that that you might find in a tincture form probably most likely and with tinctures for sleep it's always just you know you take a dropper full or a tea, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon start with that and then you slowly increase the dose and see what it does for you as with yeah all of these herbs practically you have to just find out your dose they are highly effective but it's not you know you can't like take 10 drops of tincture and then expect your headache to be gone maybe you need more like 60 drops of the tincture or a whole tablespoon or something yeah so if i say a dropper full it doesn't it does not actually mean that you have to fill this whole dropper okay yeah a dropper full is just you squeeze it one time and yeah then it's usually even less than half full yeah so this is a dropper full this is how we kind of roughly measure tinctures but you can measure it by the teaspoon you would put this in some water to just drink it down to not feel the alcohol um so much um yeah that's usually how you how you take the tinctures yeah of course yeah in this case i actually use tinctures you saw i have the valerian tincture here this is a mix of the wild lettuce the california poppy the jamaican dogwood and cramp bark so this is a good mixture for sleep and for pain and you have it ready you know you have it in tincture form the valerian sometimes i mix that in the valerian relaxes me more like physically it doesn't make me tired actually uh, but some for some people it works really well for sleep yeah so if you need to fight any pain before bedtime then you have those options or the poppy seed things that also make you a little tired tired which can of course also help and the salicylates as i said so there we have the willow bark and the meadow sweet those do not make you tired those you can take during the day and then we have our methyl xanthines <laughs> i say it again so this is just basically coffee green tea black tea matcha which is a form of green tea the powdered green tea that i showed you the guarana in powder form the cola nut in powder form cola nut is uh, widely used in africa and they offer you like fresh whole cola nut just to chew on and yeah it's wonderful it makes people talk and, and hang out and get into a, a yeah chilled uh, vibe uh, so those herbs they stimulate you a little bit yeah they are stimulating just as coffee as caffeine 
and so those you would not take in the evening or very late so i mean then of course you want to sleep yeah but if you have a headache during the day those work really well given that you do not regularly drink coffee every day yeah so then they unfortunately do not work anymore so think about it yeah if you want to uh, uh, kind of cure your fatigue problems in other ways than with coffee i recommend you check out my video about ashwagandha which is another amazing herb from ayurveda for more energy and feeling good so if you want to ditch the coffee and reserve the coffee just for uh, treating your occasional headaches or something then you can do that and also yeah check out my next playlist my channel is full of videos about how to use medicinal herbs for better health and yeah check out this playlist here that i'm going to put up here and keep watching and yeah leave me a comment leave me a like and i hope to talk to you soon ciao